All right, everybody, in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about errors in physics papers. And here today, I'm going to go over two errors that uh, really bugged me at first, but eventually I solved. And uh, I'll just point out these errors so later when you implement these things, uh, you won't be uh, bothered by this stuff. I think I already have this. All right. So this is the paper, particle-based physical elastic fluid simulation. It gives you a lot of stuff, a lot of diagrams, and a lot of equations, even uh, pseudocode algorithms and stuff. Anyway, in this paper, I wanted to bring your attention to um, this part. Uh, it's spring adjustment. Basically, in this algorithm. In this uh, fluid simulator, you basically use springs for uh, viscoelastic effects for things like jello or tofu or stuff like that, goo. But basically, over here, um, I had a pretty big uh, instability problem with this part at first. So, um, but the rest of the fluid simulator was working fine, so uh, I just I I decided that it was probably this area that was wrong. So I read through this. So for each neighbor pair i j, where i is less than j, you set q to the uh, distance between the two particles over the kernel radius, and if q is less than one, and there's no spring ij at a spring ij with rest length h so this uh, spring creation code basically works pretty well it adds a spring whenever the uh, distance between the two particles is less than um, the kernel radius and however I was noticing that springs never got deleted so uh, I I kept on writing I read a little further so uh, this code says, for each spring ij, if um, if the spring rest length is le is more than um, h, then you remove that spring. But for some reason, it wasn't uh, removing the spring, so I went and looked at this part, of the code, and then I looked at the um, stretch part, where it says if R is more than um, this and stuff, it will stretch. So if so, it but this section of the code is uh, in the Q is less than one block, so that would mean that R would Rij would have to be less than H in order for q to be less than 1. So that means that like this the spring will never stretch more than um, it will never stretch more than h so it will never get removed. So basically um, I'll uh, reiterate how I found this error. Basically all the other parts of my code was working fine. I So I looked took a closer look at the spring adjustment. I read through the algorithm and tried to uh, visualize everything in my head. And then I found this little section of uh, faulty code. I think this section would probably do better in the for each spring section, it would, where you go through every spring. So you would probably move this down over here. Yeah, so uh, remember, like, physics papers, they have to, like, provide you all these renders, diagrams, pseudocode, and on top of that, they have to make this, like, all this text and stuff. So you can't really, if you're a physics paper writer, you can't really guarantee that your paper will be 100% correct. The next paper 
I'm going to go over is analysis and reduction of quadrature errors in the material point method. Don't worry if you don't know what some of these words mean. I'll be going through them in a later tutorial. Anyway, this is the paper. I'll go back to the first page, show you. Um, it gives you a bit of an introduction. Uh, a lot of um, equations. Basically, every single NPM paper is going to have like this set of equations, and it'll tell you how to implement it in these uh, basic terms. Anyway, I'm going to go over down here where it talks about the cubic B spline function. And this is the function in the paper over here. And yeah, I would. So, first, when I implemented this, uh, I, I also encountered a bunch of like instability problems. I knew that the rest of the code was probably correct as everything had been working very well with just a linear interpolation but this was not working correctly once I started using this shape function. So I decided to graph this in a graphing um, application such as Grapher on the Mac um, and I graphed it. Now normally these kernels they're supposed to be continuous but over here there was a huge gap and that was probably what was causing the um, explosions and stuff. So basically what you have to do is you have to plug in negative 1 into this equation so it would be negative 1 negative 1 sixth plus 1 plus negative 2 plus 4 thirds. And I think eventually that it evaluates to um, 1 sixth. So what we want now is uh, for this graph to um, end up at 1 sixth over here. And eventually I solved the equation where uh, I plugged in negative 1 into here, negative 1 for this x, and then I eventually solved for this little constant variable over here. And I came up with 2 thirds. So as you can see now, it's a little more continuous over here. And, even, and then you're going to have to change this to 2 thirds also. So now everything is continuous. So now this is the new equation. The middle two are supposed to be two thirds. All right. So uh, so as I said, um, yeah, they have to type a lot of stuff, and these papers are pretty huge, so they can't make sure everything is um, correct. And you just have to use your uh, common sense in overcoming some of these problems. All right, that's it.